got to at least pray for them and pray for their way out. And Jesus tells us it, throughout the gospel, throughout man. When I mean the gospel, I mean throughout the the the, the gospel of Christ. Here, we're talking about Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. That He will separate the wheat from the chaff. He has to do this. You and I, we we have we even though we think that you know, well, it's our divine duty to sit and judge who comes in and out of the church we can't do that that's Amen. not what that's not what we're for only god can do that and Amen. here's here, it, it, here's the the reality of that situation not that that isn't but if you are if you choose to be one of those people who's judgmental about who comes into church and who goes out of church and who's a hypocrite who's not a hypocrite all if you if you alienate those people away from the church, they're they're never going to fix themselves. It's impossible Amen. for them to fix themselves. Amen, brother. The the church is Amen. full of imperfect people. Some people are hypocrites. Some people just go because their parents told them to. Can I can I interject right quick? I, I, it, this is a message for the people that do like to judge people in the church. I, um, I I was one of them. I'll be the first to admit it. I was one of them. I got to talking with a good friend of mine one day, and he said, I want you to think about what it would feel like if you knew what that person was saying about you and realize that you're doing the exact same, that that, same thing that that person is doing. How does that make you feel? That's right. Mm -hmm. I, want to tell you, I, I want to tell you this. Not, the church is not, a hosp is not a mausoleum for the saints. It is a hospital for sinners. Amen. And yes. as Amen. soon as we can, re the more that people will realize that, the better off we'll be. It, we are our brother's keeper. We must be about spreading the gospel of Christ. And it's, it's no accident whatsoever who... Jesus picked as his disciples. Every one of them was flawed. I That's mean, you right. had you had Amen. tax collectors. You you had a, a variation of people who, for the most part, would were deemed as as high and mighty or underhanded in one way or the other. And he he chose them to be his closest followers, his teachers. It's not by accident. That's right. That's right. But. I'm gonna move on to the, the the last reason that I wrote down. There's a, there's many more, but these are these are the ones that that spoke out to me. So the last one is we find support in our trials. When trials come, a support system is crucial. When in need, you will want your brothers and sisters in Christ to uphold you in prayer and assist in practical needs like meals, cleaning, childcare, and Galatians. 6, 1, and 2 encourages us to help each other. But not only does it do that, it tells you in what manner you should help people. And by manner, I mean what um, tone you, you go to help people. So Galatians um, 6, 1 says, Brethren, if a man be overtaken in a fault, ye which are spiritual, restore such a one in the spirit of meekness. Considering thyself, lest thou also be tempted. This is, this is, it tells you right there, if you're going to correct somebody, you don't correct somebody in a, a high and mighty tone. You do it in meekness. Why? Because humans will easily become hardened if you come up to them, you're doing wrong. You're doing wrong. This ain't right. That ain't what you're supposed to be doing. I can tell you right now, if somebody, I'm just being honest, somebody comes to me like that, I will, more often than not, because of who I'm this stubborn and this prideful that I'll go out and do exactly what they told me not to do simply because they told me not to do it. You can't tell me what to do. Right? Mm -hmm. But on the flip side, if somebody comes up and goes, hey, you know, you probably shouldn't, you probably shouldn't be doing that. It says right here in the Bible, you shouldn't do it that way. You shouldn't do this. You shouldn't do that. It's a lot more easy. Exactly. It's a lot more easily received. If you don't come at it in a harsh tone. Now that being said, there are times and there are people who respond much better to that harsh tone. Um, yeah. But right here, this example says if you're going to correct 
somebody, a man overtaken in fault, you do it in a spirit of meekness. And then the last part of that verse, it says, considering thyself, lest thou also be tempted. And that, to me, that part's talking about, you, number one, it'd be a, a situation of, well, well, so-and-so's doing it. I know it's wrong, but he's doing it, so I'm, I'm going to do it too. Because if he's doing it, it can't be that bad, right? So I feel like that's a part of it, but I also feel like a part of it is consider yourself that you, uh, all, lest you also be tempted, is... You better be real careful not to be prideful when you go correcting somebody. Like, I know better than you do. I, I, right. You, you got to be real careful or you, you yourself are going to fall into something that's not okay to be doing. Well, I, I'll tell you, uh, Herschel, as being a pastor, I've, I've realized that a lot. When you go and you go to a correction, however you want to put it, I call it edification. I, I, I go back to building up. Mm -hmm. Um when I when I go and I talk to somebody, I found it a whole lot easier if I go to them in humbleness and meekness and mildness than to go sternness and just wholeheartedly, you know, because if you do that, sometimes in sternness, you become prideful like you just said. Now, I understand sometimes in sternness you can be stern, but yet not prideful. But sometimes in the human, your human side wants to take over and you become pride. Absolutely. And you'll fall right back off into temptation. And it might not be the same temptation that your brother fell off into. It may be a temptation that God, God says, you know what? I, I delivered him from this. He, this he, he, what do you tell, what do you tell the devil? Try my, try my servant, Joe. Yep. Mm hmm. Yep. I'll go back to your, your what your lesson was a couple of weeks ago. Try my service, Joe. Yep. Exactly. And then the the actually, I'll be honest. When I was writing this part, I actually uh, initially was only going to go going to quote the the second verse. But I, for this the exact reason we're discussing now, I feel like the first verse was extremely important to include. But the second verse says, and this is back to we find support in trial. It says, bear ye one another's burdens, and so fulfill the law of Christ. It don't get any more plain than that. You are supposed to help each other out. Whether that is correcting somebody, whether that is teaching somebody, whether that is just simply listening to somebody because that's what they need at that time, or whether it's giving somebody a meal, helping somebody out with some work around their yard, so, so anything of that nature right here. Bear ye one another's burdens. It doesn't say bear ye one another's burdens when it's convenient for you. That's right. Amen. It Amen. says do it. Period. And like I said, Amen. that that is uh kind of towards the end of it. I got one little section, kind of a closeout thing, and uh, that's gonna be it for for my part of this. Well, for the lesson. Uh, in an age when the culture that we live in is increasingly divided. It is beneficial to be in a family of like-minded believers. These brothers and sisters will encourage you in your faith journey. Respond to your questions, which is something I need desperately, and be a support in times of hardship. That, that is the value of a family, in the family of Christ. That's, that's, that is what the value is. So for whoever wrote that comment, if this somehow reaches you, I hope I've answered your question because it is vitally important to have Amen. a church family. Amen. And that's all I got tonight, boys. Whew. All right, uh, you want to go around the room? Yeah, we can. I got nothing. <laughs> <laughs> I'm tired. Um, I will say, yeah, I didn't say as much tonight because of uh, I, I've been taking a good beating tonight, and thank you for it. Thank you, God, for using Herschel to do it for one. And thank you, God, for using all of y'all to do it for one, because I really, really need it tonight. Um, I, I can't express how grateful I am that I've got this family of Christ to go to on top of my church family, because I, I find it struggling day after day after day, and it's so easy to keep falling off and falling off and falling off, so I'm constantly repenting. And that's when you might see my messages on chat pop up throughout the day. It's because I'm really leaning on y'all. Just as much as you are me, I'm leaning on y'all. And I, I'm pre I really, really appreciate all of it. Thank you.
Well, let me let me throw this out there to anybody that may be listening. Maybe one of y'all is struggling with this. Find find a church. Uh, don't don't make the deal with yourself. Well, I'll go a couple of Sundays. No, find if you go to a church, and after a couple of Sundays, you start making excuses on why you don't want to go back. You're in the wrong church. That's number Amen. one. That, that's Amen. number one. Uh, that most likely because the spirit's not moving in that church. That's just yeah, my opinion. Sure. All right, but num number two. Try, try if the, if you go to church and and it don't fit you, don't give up. Don't say church just ain't for me. No, that church is not for you. God has a home for you somewhere, and when you find it, you will know. And in the beginning, uh, yeah, you will have those thoughts. I work all week. I don't want to get up early on Sunday morning and go to church. I promise you, it's worth it. It is. I lived in that way. I lived in that mindset. I can read the Bible. I can pray to God. I can do all these things. I don't have to go to church. There is so many blessings just from regular church attendance. Because, uh, yeah, I, I'm a firm believer that you should do your own Bible study and reading and, and be in prayer with the Spirit for true understanding. However... There's, there's things you'll learn in church from being around a church family that sometimes you'll overlook and miss from regular Bible study on your own. That's, that's just my two cents worth. Don't, don't, don't fall into that category of thinking just going at 11 o'clock on Sunday morning is enough either. Go ahead and put in the time. Here you go. I, I heard a preacher say this, and I'm sorry. It might have been the preacher that's in this room with us, but I'm sorry I don't remember which preacher it was. God's only going to put as much into you as you will put into him. Amen. Amen. Right. And there you go. That's my two cents. David? David? Uh, yeah, uh, thank you all guys for letting me sit in tonight and uh, giving me a chance to speak here and there. Uh, I can't, I don't think I can begin to put an amount on the number of blessings that have came from me asking God, first and foremost, to come into my heart and asking him to lead me where he would have me to be. And ultimately, me me not putting the foot down on him, if in any point that, you know, us in our humanistic ways can choose to, uh, the growth.